All right. So today, I guess what we're going to talk about is working with MIDI drums, working with flams specifically, and then working with MIDI drums in terms of quantizing and using the nudge function and stuff centered around that. I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out. We're going to kind of wing it. All right. So to introduce the track that we're working on, this session was actually sent to me by my friend David today. And we were talking when we were in my Patreon book club earlier about uh, working with MIDI drums and trying to get a flam right and quantizing it and how that can really mess things up. And, um, you know, struggling through that whole rigmarole and how tedious and annoying it can be. And um, so David sent me this to use for this video because we thought it would be a good example. So thank you so much for sending this over. You can check out David's music. It's Sky Flying By, and I'm going to put a link in the description to it as well. If you like very texturally rich ambient music, then you'll probably love Sky Flying By. So please go check it out. So the way it's being done here is this MIDI drum track is actually just a scratch track. So later, David's going to go in and record an actual acoustic drum kit in a studio. So he goes into very, very nice studios and records and gets a really good take of live drums. But in the meantime, there's a need for a scratch track and there's a need for a scratch track that is complete, that has things like flams in it. Because um, one, you know, you don't want to forget that you wanted to have a flam there. Right. And it's nice to have your scratch tracks as complete as, um, you know, close to the final thought as possible. Right. So we want to get those flams working and we want to get this track to feel kind of polished. That's kind of the goal in my understanding, at least, um, you know. If you are sky flying by, you can let me know in the comments below if I got it wrong. But um, that's the idea here. So I wanted to show a couple of things that we were kind of talking about in book club that um, came up and people were thinking, you know, maybe people here on YouTube might appreciate this. So basically what we have in this piece, what I've uh, noticed so far, right, is that we have some snare rolls and we have flams. So right here in the main body of the piece, it's snare roll, flam, flam snare roll, flam, flam. And then like later in the piece, we have like just flams by themselves. So I'm just going to hit play here so you can kind of get an idea of what we're working with. And then here are just our flams. Cool. So that's what we're working with. So I have a couple thoughts about this. The big thing here is that um, you can quantize and then nudge things. So for example, if I zoom way in here, we can see this flam. We can figure out exactly what the flam value is that we like. So let's say we like this flam. What I can do is use my selector tool. And so here, this is the, the velocity for each uh, note on the snare, right? Um, and I can hold command to go out of my grid, right? So I can click off the grid and I can just highlight and then I can see exactly what that value is for my highlight. So where it says length here, that's my highlight length. So it's two milliseconds. So that might be a good flam length. And if I were really doing this, I might go and look through and like find the ones that I really like the most and then pay attention to how long those are and kind of keep that in mind. So I'm just going to say it's two milliseconds here. Um, so if I keep that in mind, what I could do to my track is, especially if it was just nothing but flams, right? If we separate out the flams onto a separate track, which might be worth doing here, it might be worth, um, especially since there's a, a pretty distinct pattern, you could in theory separate out the rolls from the flams and then treat the flams accordingly. And you could also, like if you have flams, like this one has this top one first, and this one has the bottom first. If you were fitting a pattern, right, where the first one was always the top snare first, uh, second one's always the bottom snare first, you could separate those out onto separate tracks too. Um, and that might be how I would go about it. Um, it would still be fairly uniform across the thing. So if you want to add some randomness, you might want to introduce some randomness later um, using, you know, those timing features. But um, let me just demonstrate with this one here. So if I take this, and I go into, let's see, I think it's event. Yeah. Uh, MIDI real time properties. I'm going to turn on quantize. And when I turn on quantize, you'll see these notes move. So bam, now they're 100%, right? I might not want 100%. I might want like 70. I might want 30. You know, it's kind of up to you how you want it. But what you might notice is that if you do this to the whole track, it messes it up, right? It messes up the humanity. It makes it too robotic, too awkward, too weird if you even start to quantize it. So you have a couple options. One thing is to quantize it like all the way, right? 
And it kind of depends on the genre, how I would do it. Like if I was doing something more pop and electronic, I might actually quantize these all the way. Um, and then, you know, when I write that to the track. So now I have this written to the track. So all of my everything is going to be on the grid exactly. So I'd be very careful during this. You'll notice that I actually duplicated the track a couple times already <laughs> so that I could go back if I wanted to because um, we're kind of exploring today. But at this point, right, what I could do is I could take all of the bottom notes if I wanted them all to be the same type of flam. And I could look at this and I could go up to my nudge value and remember the flam distance that we liked was two milliseconds. So I can make sure that this is in milliseconds here next to where it says nudge here. Our value is in milliseconds and then, I'm sorry, minutes and seconds and milliseconds. So now I'm on milliseconds for my nudge value. So now if I use the nudge function, it's gonna move by one millisecond each time I press the button. So with our nudge, we can use the comma and the period on our keyboard to nudge forwards or backwards. So I, for example, if we want this bottom one to be like the, you know, the first note, the pickup note of the flam, I can hit this twice and now it's two milliseconds ahead of the other one. So that's one way you can do it. The drawback there, right, is they're all exactly the same. So it's not going to sound very human. But once you do that, you could then introduce some randomization and that might that might cut it for you. If you wanted, you could go through and like pick some chunks and be like, all right, this I'm going to move to the right using the period button by one millisecond. So now it's like a little bit closer. You could add some variation that way by just adding them here or there. And you know what? Let me um, switch up to this other duplicate of the track because this has it how he played it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to get rid of this one. We're done with that. We can always make another one, right? So we have this one. I'm going to actually, I'm going to already make another one just in case. So I'm going to make another one. So here's our duplicate here. I'm going to unsolo it. So this is how he played it, right? This is how it was played into the system. Um, let me try experimenting with MIDI real-time properties, quantizing, but not doing it 100%. So we're going to bring it down. Um, let's do like, just so it has a little of that human swing to it. So it's a little closer to how he played it. And my thought here is you do this part of the way, right? Then you hit right to track. Okay, so now that's done, right? Now what I might do is part of the problem here is that these are all random relative to each other because it's it was played by a human, right? So it's the quantizing might have undone the flamminess of it, if that makes sense. But I still have some of the humanity of where this one's hitting because I did quantize it. Um, I did quantize it, right? So what I might do is since these are all flams, you know, wherever there are flams, and I guess for a lot of what I'm doing here requires that you break the rolls off onto a separate track. But when it's a repeating pattern, you know, you could you could play it in that way, for example. Um, that might be the thing to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these, I'm gonna delete them, right? Now I'm gonna highlight these and I'm gonna basically try to duplicate these. So I'm gonna do command D to duplicate, and then I'm gonna Zoom in a little so I can see what I'm doing here. And here you can see where the highlight is. So these are the ones that are highlighted. And I bring them down to the other snare sound and over. And now I still have them highlighted. So I'm very careful not to click off of these because I don't want to lose all these highlighted. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and then hold command to go off the grid and get this lining up exactly. I'm zooming way in as much as I can. Click, hold command. Make sure that it's right there. That's like the smallest unit of movement that we can have. So it's exactly lined up. So now what I have, right, is I have the top snare that has been quantized a little bit, but it still has some of the humanity in it. So it'll have some of that variation, right? And then I have the bottom snare, which I want to be the flam, and it has mimicked this human variation. So it's in, you know, aligned with the same exact type of variation that we did for the other one. So now if I nudge it, it will give me a legit flam. So I just did comma twice to nudge by two milliseconds, right? So now it's given me a legit flam that has some human variation on it that's aligned with the original performance. So I think that's how I would probably do it is that way. And just in order to do that in these sections where you have the rolls, which I've ruined by quantizing, I believe, um, I would break the rolls out onto a separate track before I do all that. 
I think that's it. So this is kind of like a weird ADD type of distracted uh, YouTube video. But I guess the basic concept here is, you know, how you might work with drum MIDI tracks. The idea that you can change your nudge value, right? So you can just change it up here to whatever you want. I use this a lot for uh, adjusting timing on drum samples. I like to use drum samples a lot. So I use it a lot for that. It's very helpful. And again, you know, comma and period to do the nudge forward or backward. You just have to highlight whatever you want to nudge first. And then, you know, a little bit about our uh, MIDI real time properties. So. That's there. I'm kind of afraid of the random thing, to be honest. I don't love it. I don't love it. But it probably depends on like the genre and the type of work you tend to do. But I personally don't love it. So that's my thought. All right. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to like this video, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. Uh, we're hanging out on Discord. That's where I got the idea for this video. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So please check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. So this shirt I haven't worn it in a while because I cut it up and I cut it up a little wrong. But I'm wearing it with this over it. So it's okay. It's all right. It's kind of like I just wear it as like a bathing suit cover up or if I have another thing with me, you know, I'll do that. And I hope this sounded okay. This is my first time using this for a YouTube video. So it's the new SM7 DB microphone. So let me know what you think of that too. Um, I did decorate it. I did not decorate my old one, but I did ooh, noise. I did decorate this new one. So that was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else I have to say. That might be it. I am kind of tired and it's getting hot in here and I want to run my air again. So goodbye.